But we got a running thing where we let uh we let the guests put us in the hot seat. That's a good one. That's gonna be the next one. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's like, like, how to tell you here time. But we put ourselves in the hot seat while we put together true, the hot true. seat though anyway, so it's not like a one sided thing. Go ahead, go ahead, my boy. I know, you get it, y'all just want to be sure it's like sitting on How about this gentleman? I love this gentleman. I can see how my girlfriend feel when I sit on her leg. What? I wouldn't know. I just heard why you went wrong. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's still a funny one, though. It is. It said, ladies, what if he pulls out mid-stroke and says, this pussy trash and leaves and knocks over your flat screen TV? Knock <laughs> over the flat screen TV. Jesus Christ. All right, so the first one I said, the first one I got is, oh, first off, Welcome back to another episode of the Thanks for tuning in. My name is Sage. It's enough. We out here with Chris today. We're gonna put her in the hot seat. This is a young teacher and motherfucking mentor and motherfucking model. Cause she is a multifaceted young lady who wears so many hats. Talk ever. So at the end of the day, she out here, she's gonna chime in. We're gonna put her in the hot seat real quick today and uh, see how she chimes in on some of the questions that the group uh, has to ask. So the first question is, what advice do you have for someone who can uh, give love but doesn't know how to take love? Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming from personal experience, because I'm um, a big person that does this as well, I, I'm a Leo, so we love to show affection, especially like material ways, um, through physical love and touch and things like that. But what it took me to learn how to take love was just sitting back and figuring out what type of love I like. Yeah, I agree with that. So just learning your own love language, the things that you enjoy when you're not working or not stressed out, what, how you de-stress, how you mm -hmm. de-stress uh, de yourself. Mm -hmm. Think about those things and asking that from that person. And it's just about being present, I think. Mm -hmm. I think most things about being present in the what moment. What do you mean about being present? Being present is in like gratitude. I think it's hard sometimes because people always think about what they don't have or what they got going on and the issues they got. But if you think about being present, being grateful in the moment of, hey, I got somebody that's actually trying to give me love, even though I don't know how to receive it right now, I should be grateful that somebody here willing to try to even give it to me. Being grateful like you hate your job, but hey, I got a nine to five. I know I got a, I got a check coming every two weeks or whatever the case may be. Uh, entrepreneurs the same way, right? You can struggle because you got a bad week of sales, but you got to be grateful that you're out here grinding on your own. You got something you can say you can call your own. Being I, think a, is hard. I, I think there's a root question in that question, though. And we was actually discussing this at the crib. Is, um, apparently, I was the odd man out, too. I was the odd man out, so I want to take care of how y'all feel. Can you love someone if you don't love yourself? Yeah, you asked me that question the other day. I was thinking that too, but I think I think that people have the tendency to already be able to love somebody else minus loving themselves. I think a lot. I think for the most part, people in this world that we live in. But where do you think that comes from? Like, hate, hate for yourself. That's 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 not. No, I mean, that's the ability to love someone before you love yourself. Because even like as a child, you love yourself. Like you love your parents because they do what you want done for yourself. You see what I'm saying? So you're saying so you're you're, mm -hmm. you're taught to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, you're, the most hard-headed child is only hard-headed because he loves himself or herself. What's, what's that word? I, there's this word that I keep I'm trying to um, recall, but I can't think of the word. But it's self. Um, it's like. Uh, like self defense, like um, that's another word for self defense. Self defense, uh, self defense. No, no, no. Like, uh, <laughs> you, you over anybody else? Like the odds, the kind of self preservation. Self preservation. Self -preservation. Self -preservation. That's what I've been trying to um, think for the uh, past thing. There's that thing where self preservation. So, so self preservation is like you won't hurt yourself. You dig All right, so you don't think that's a verse? That's a that's a, a chapter of self love. Because there I are think, people that don't have self-preservation. I think that it is, but then when you when you have things like um, you live in a world where you really have people like uh, police officers, uh, army people, blah blah blah. blah. Even We're like all soldiers. I get it. What I'm saying, like uh, soldiers, <laughs> soldiers, soldiers, army, mother, like, army, army, army people. people. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, there's 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 a level of putting yourself. Self-preservation comes. To an extent, like you, you, you have the self-preservation versus, um, you know, uh, collective preservation. 
there's there's some people that will put collective preservation, like making sure that everybody else lives over themselves live. So I don't think that self-preservation has anything to do with self-love. I can love myself all I want, but my level of self-preservation only lasts to the point where if, if everybody else is going to die, but I go die first. But just a chapter. Mm -hmm. It's a chapter in the book on self-love. I don't think I don't think that what I'm saying is I don't think that self-preservation is greater. Like you know what I'm saying? Like if if your self-love is higher, then your your self-preservation is like you 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 love yourself too much. I think that's the I, I think that's the definition of sacrifice and self-love. You can still have self-preservation, but you're willing to sacrifice it for uh, what you say the like, collective. collective, like for everybody else. Would you die for your family? Would you die for your you know what I'm saying? Like who would you die for? But if you so, don't love yourself, can you love someone else? And you say yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, I want to start with the self-preservation thing. I think it's more of a survival skill. That's why we all innately have it, mm -hmm. right? Self-preservation, you think more of like, am I going to sacrifice these hours at this job versus me going to school? You're, you're picking what is best for you at the end of the day. So everybody has self-preservation. Mm -hmm. But it's what still on a different level than self-love. Mm -hmm. And I think that is because it was a lack of a skill that wasn't presented in childhood. Right? Like we're modeled everything to us on what we think we should know and what we think we should be. And we can see from our parents, especially in our generation, that self-preservation isn't always there because they have to do for the collective, the family. So not everybody does have that. I think you're right. It's something that has to be learned. It's yeah. innate, but it has to still be learned at the same time. The, the, the access has to be chiseled off of the staff. Absolutely. And you develop that self-love for yourself after years of going through your own personal journey to find that. And I don't think you really can love somebody else and not love yourself because you don't exactly know what that love is. Mm -hmm. It's hard to figure that out. Like right. you, you just model and do what you think other people do in society. You right. model that to them and say, oh, this is this is how I'm supposed to love you, so this is how I love you. Right. But with that, say that, that's not that person's love language. Mm -hmm. Then are you really loving them or are you just showing what you think it is? Right. Mm -hmm. my, my, the way I broke down with that, John, was that uh, Love isn't a tangible thing. You know what I'm saying? So because it's not tangible, it comes from within. People evaluate love differently. Different. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Love, 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 love language. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But love still comes from within. So if you can be a person that says I don't love myself, but this, this let's how let's be what are you giving to someone else that you say you love? So this is so so have you ever have you ever this is just a random question, have you ever been in a situation where Somebody um, thought that they were loving you so great, but the the amount of love that they weren't giving you wasn't received by you. Like where you're just like, I don't like being loved that way. I don't. Like, all right. So here's another thing. Even though there are different love languages, I like that question. Mm -hmm. Even though there are different love languages, uh, remember we had the debate back in the day was um, is there something is false knowledge? Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I always stood on no. Because if it's false knowledge, it was. I mean, I said, I forget what I said. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't feel mean, like breaking I, that down. Yeah, I kind of know. But that, man. love. Know so it, it kind of brings the same question: Is incorrect love love? If you're like, I love you, and you're like, I don't. Receive I think that. that the way somebody gives love versus the way somebody receives love are two different highways that people have to kind of like understand what 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 road are you driving on and what road am I driving on? The the thing that makes love real is when people have that conversation to make it like, okay, let's understand what makes this work. Like, I see what you're trying to do, but that's not how I love. And then I see what you're trying to like make me receive, but you know what I'm saying? And I want you to understand what I'm trying to give you and let's just let's just figure out like that's just the way you feel. Yeah. That's Love when when I do this, that's me like trying to be like, hey, sweetheart, I love you. <laughs> like, you think about that? Right? <laughs> trying to be in those situations. But. It's about being as, as self aware as much as you can even acknowledge mm -hmm. how you're giving and receiving that to even have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's where that personal self, love comes That's why I keep saying, you know, adult, adult, adult conversations you know matter. Adult conversations matter. You just said, you just said, right? <laughs> self aware. <laughs> and consciousness. All of that goes into self love, love because you will let yourself get beat or drained of your natural resources if you don't love yourself and you're gonna you're gonna translate it as you love me bro. Mm -hmm. Like no, you didn't know how to love, love yourself. You don't have to preach. Yeah, man, no, I just said the right word. There's a certain group of words that when they get together, it's just unbreakable. <laughs> you know? All right, here we go to the next question. 
If you want better relationships, I highly suggest dating people who come from two parent homes. I was just about to say. Do you think that that is a fact or not? No. Oh. Falsehood, 100%. Because you're your own person at the end of the day, no matter what you see in my I also come from a two-parent home, you know, but I also came from where the matriarch of the family was the actual leader. Mm -hmm. So it was different, you know, so my brothers, yeah, my father was sick most of my life, so they didn't really get that that fatherly figure that they were hoping to get. They had to figure that shit out on their own, as far as what a man should be or what it should look like. He was sick, my mom had to take care of him. Mm -hmm. So it was different, where I had a strong mother in my life, and I mean, I think I contributed to, you know, me being attracted to women as well. Like, I like dominant, you know, women that want women that get shit done. But at the same time, you know, I was also, for a long time, very anti-monogamous. Mm. See, my parents grow up, they were married the whole time, but I'm like, ah, that's not for me. Mm, so right. it's your choice at the end of the day. Whatever you see and digest is still your choice. Mm. I think that people's, people's idea of monogamy has to change. Like, um... When, when you're dating somebody and you think about long term, like life is a long, long, long It's only short at the end. You, yeah, you keep short sure at the end. You're like, oh, wait a minute. You run the right. risk. And some people are like completely fine with this. And I feel like that's a lot of the issues that I have with dating where it's like, you run into the situation where somebody who's like, they lived their life and they did all this other stuff and now they're trying to find somebody that's just like, Going on to, like you just do this and do what I say for the rest of my life. Like, you have like, to be with somebody, uh, but how can you be with somebody unless you love yourself? Love, yeah, you gotta yeah, be okay yeah. with being with yourself. She tried to time it, time it back in. Yeah, no, she didn't try. She, she, she did it. She, she did it. 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 All right, so just to lighten the mood up a little bit, what's the funniest movie that you've ever watched? I'm going back to when we were talking about, um, I just want, I'm going to interrupt you first, even though you're supposed to be in the hot seat. Um, I'm going to go back to the Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder is one of my top movies of all time. 100%. Like, for real, dog, like, for real. And I'll go back to the scary movie with you. But wait, I still think, about, wait, what was the question? What's funny. the funniest movie of all time? Funniest movie of all time. Spaceballs. <laughs> airplane. Uh, I think airplane, airplane, airplane is up there. Airplane. You know, you know what got me? Yeah. You know what got me? Funniest shit because of the fucking big ass. All right, so how do you define the funniest? Like your reaction the first time seeing it, pretty much, right? I think there's layers to it. We're I know, but like we're gonna go with a basic layer. Like your, your react. I don't know if I laughed harder at a movie than I did the first time I seen Paper Soldiers. That shit, I broke a red hat. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I broke a red hat. Paper Soldiers. The DVD that you stole money and then lost? That movie? I don't remember that movie. Did you really borrow that? Did you really let me borrow that? No, no, you took it. I know, I did. You took it. I'm sorry, you did. You know when your brother, there's, one, there's certain things that your brother can bring up to you for the rest of your life that you know you fucking like let him down man. one fucking time. Oh, it don't know. matter how old you get, the motherfucker will always bring that shit up and be like, remember when you took my movie and you let the other motherfucker borrow it? You know the story behind that? I ain't gonna like, I ain't gonna do Nah, nah, I'm it. just saying, it, it, it was traumatic for me because I was just <laughs> coming into my independence. I had my own DVD player, my own small DVD collection and stuff like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you lose one of my favorite jokes. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I love you, man. You know what happened in that movie? Nope. I'll tell you what happened in that movie. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you all, okay? Everybody's such a long. It's such a sad story. It's such a sad story. You watched right? too much and it died. <laughs> no, it was Philly. Somebody, like, so he let me borrow. Well, I took the movie from him. I didn't borrow the movie. I took the movie from him. And then my little brothers took the movie from me and let somebody borrow it. If you. Then the guy, the guy that borrowed the movie got shot. Like, oh damn. <laughs> and then he's like, yo, give me my movie back. And I was like, what am I going to go knock on my mom's door? Like, <laughs> damn. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you can lie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just sorry. the shit out of here. I'm, I'm never bringing that up again, dog. That's really what I'm saying. We never bring it up. I'm sorry. 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 i Yo, yo, motherfucking Harlem Knights. Harlem Knights, dog. That joint hilarious. Fucking uh, coming to America, gotta be up there yeah, too. To life. Before. You already life said life. Classic. Life. Did you already say life? No, or, I didn't say life. No, life was a classic, but, big but big it movie. wasn't that funny. Yeah, fun. Big difference. Yo, you tripping? You tripping? Classic movie, but it wasn't mm -hmm. that funny. Life, one of the funniest movies ever. Nah, I'm out of Had funny moments, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a funny movie. So the next question was, uh, do you desire marriage? Why or why not? I mean. I, I ain't desired. My wife just earned 
You did your high seat section already. <laughs> yeah, you still coming in from the background. We got the all shit. shit. We don't let we get that. You know what I mean? That's low. Nah, but that's a great question though. What, what did you, you say? You want marriage? It, it, yeah. It, it, I'm like, Eric, I'm it like, depends on your journey, depends on where you at. Exactly. And then, it, nah. it can change. It's a, it's a flux of it. Mm. Like I said, I grew up and I didn't want it. And now, you know, being with my fiance for 10 years, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. I feel like everybody. 10, ten years. 10 ten years. October 1st. This October 1st will be 10 years. Y'all still ain't married? I'll leave that alone. There you go. She's younger than you, old head. Don't I'm have not it. stressed in the ceremony. Yeah. I'm not here to please a whole bunch of that's other people. That's even worse. Me. No, I'm that's even worse that you're not married. He's from a different generation, about yes, the way. Yes, I am. Totally this is what he's well, saying. This generation. <laughs> that way was fucking money. That shit cost. You should be proud because that means for me us to be together for 10 years, me, I spent my entire twenties with this person. Mm, exactly. So you gotta understand that. Oh, I know that it was the way. You know, because pretty soon she's gonna be demanding something decades about Cause uh, that's <laughs> a lot of weight and it's like uh, Oh no, she's a simple one out of us too. <laughs> so what's the next the next question is What's a random line from a movie that only fans of the movie would know? <laughs> only fans of the movie, huh? Yeah, only fans of the movie. Alright, you ready? Call me Curtis. 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 I got one for you. So we, are, are we going to split it? Go ahead. Alright, just tell me what it is. He doesn't know how to use the pre C shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> Um, damn, I can't think of what you were that bad. That, you know, that that's movie, my, that's um, my favorite one of my favorite movies. Oh, she was trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you know, he really was good. by himself though, and was like, just in his, that like him. In his mind, that, all that way, is, everybody. If you've seen that movie, that's what I'm saying. In his mind, all he hears is the nobody. Fun nobody of it, that sees that movie knows what the fucking three seasons was. What if was you Google movie? it now, the Does director, the explanation, the director oh said he literally looked around the bathroom and said, "What can I find that is unexplainable?" And just to, to make it look futuristic, he just saw she sells she, she on the top of the toilet. And said, he doesn't know that. You know what I thought it was? No you know what I assumed it was? I, I assumed it was a bidet. See, but you would, it's not, they never explained what it was. That's why I assumed you it was a bidet. made that up in your head. There is no explanation. It, it's like watching Pulp Fiction with that case. You, know you never know what's in the case. Now? You know how much of a letdown that was when I found out there is no way to use a tree seat? I, was, I really wanted to know. I you Googled really it. Know how to use a tree seat. Yeah. Alright, guys, thanks for tuning in. Bless this guy. I'll have this next week. I didn't do your movie thing. <laughs> 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 you gonna cut it right there. You gonna cut it right there.